see you there. <laughs> Hey there, it's Adam, and I'm backstage here at the O2 in London, and I am here for the first night of two nights with Queen. And uh, I thought maybe I would show you guys around backstage a little bit. Come on. So now the most important room in the entire venue is catering. Here we go. Gorgeous lighting. <laughs> but even better food. Alright, so are you going to follow me while I eat, or are you going to leave me alone and let me eat in peace? Come on. I feel incredible knowing that we were able to sell out three London shows within the same week, having actually just played London six months ago uh, during the holidays. So it's very exciting. It just shows, I think, how dedicated fans are of this band and what, what Queen's reach is uh, into pop culture. You know, looking out in the audience, you see people of all ages. You see people that probably had the albums when they first came out and went to those shows. You see their children, you see their children's children. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. I can't really pick a favorite song at this point. I, you know, I think they're all so different and nearly every song in the set is pretty iconic. I mean, you look out in the audience and everybody's singing every word. Um, I don't know, it kind of depends on what mood I'm in, I guess. You know, I think they all kind of occupy their own space. Um, emotionally. So if I'm feeling frustrated about anything in my life, singing Another One Bites the Dust is a great therapy. Uh, Somebody to Love is just honest, and I completely relate to the lyrics of that song. When I sing Who Wants to Live Forever, I, I think about Freddie. I think about Freddie um, sort of being taken away from us way too soon, and him being so ahead of his time. And I think about that, because in a way, he is living forever because we're still singing these songs, we're still performing them for the audience, we're reminding them of Freddie. Freddie makes appearances during the show, we talk about Freddie. He is living on through his contributions, through his art. And that's one of the biggest treats of being able to do this this many years later is that it, it allows someone like me who, who looks to Freddie as an icon, as a, as a role model, as a hero, and sort of getting to, in my own way, sort of carry a torch for him in a way and keep it burning. It, it, really, it's, it really means a lot to me, I, I love that. So uh, last month I actually met with this, uh, this group called Mosaic and it is an LGBTQ um, young persons collective here in London and it's an outreach thing. They create community space for these young people who are identifying as a number of different things. And it was such a nice chat that we all had and I was so impressed with them. And so we left and I said, we should get them tickets to the Queen Show if they want to come. And so they're here. So I'm going to go say hi. Hi. So I'm like, I always like, there's like moments in the show where I think about him and like or some of the lyrics of some of the songs that he wrote. And I'm like, wow, I mean this still feels true today. Like it doesn't seem like it was written in the 70s or the 80s. It feels like it could have been written yesterday. I don't know, it might be an interesting thing to think about when you guys are listening to the songs. Like, one of the things that I really love about performing with Queen, um, besides the incredible songs and these amazing musicians that I get to share the stage with, is thinking about Freddie and the way he performed. He was fearless, he was bold, he was over the top, and he was wild. And starting in the 70s, his wardrobe was also really, really playful. Uh, it was whimsical, it was glam, it was camp. I think he knew that. And that was sort of the, the idea of it, is it was winking at the audience, it, was, it had a sense of humor about it, being completely over the top. And so when I pick out my looks for this, this concert, I always try to think of it from that point of view. I found this at a department store, it's Alexander McQueen. I fell in love with it. It's like a trench coat, right? And so I get it home and I start looking at it, I'm like, oh, it's gonna be so hot on stage. How do I make this a little bit cooler and, and more active so that I can wear it? And so I cut the sleeves off of a brand new Alexander McQueen leather coat, which was kind of risky, but I did it and I love it. <laughs> I love this jacket. 
And then I put on another, a couple other things, and this is what I end the show in. It's this silver custom skin graft, which are friends of mine, this designer. And it's matching with matching trousers, silver leather. And then we top it off with this amazing gold lame cloak. 